One of the things that I didn't quite realise when I started walking the Highlands first is that roads and railways are virtually the same age in the Highlands because consider that Thomas Telford didn't begin his great road building program until the beginning of the 19th century and that's when George Stevenson built the rocket which was to revolutionise transport. This was the Glen Ogle line that carried the calendar Oban line, the first railway to reach the Atlantic. This section was built in 1870. That bit I've been walking on because it came to a premature end here in 1965 when a great rock fall from the hill up there swept away a wee bit of the line. It could have been repaired, but because the railway was due to close in five weeks after the rock fall, it was never reopened. The old line went by Glenogle, the Khyber Pass of Scotland, to reach the Tay and Crean Larich. This was the section which was closed after the landslide. But the old line continues by the Crean Larich spur of the West Highland Railway below Ben Moor. Crean Larich is where the two lines diverge, one on each side of the River Fillon. But curiously enough, the Oban folk had wanted this direct link to Glasgow since 1894, but they had to wait for that landslide of 1965 before they got it. This is Cree and Larich Upper Station. And these are the old engine sheds serving the West Highland Railway. But the Oban line begins on the West Highland Railway now at Cree and Larich. Now this place is 600 feet above sea level and it's always been renowned amongst mountaineers and it occupies a special place in my heart because these are amongst the first mountains I ever climbed. And during the week when I worked in Glasgow, I was always thinking of Sunday when I could get up here on an excursion train for two and threepence. Before the train can advance, it has to get clearance. And this can only be given by passing a token to the second man and only the next station can release the token, which makes it impossible for two trains to meet each other on this single line. The bell is a signal that the token can be released, and now the token in its leather purse is ready, and once it has been passed, the signal can be pulled. Bang on time, then. And now we see the passing of the token. Now, it's been in the West Highland line to here, but now it's coming onto the Oban line, and it can't advance here until the second man gets this token. That's me on my way to Tyndrum, along Strathfillan, and under Ben Louie, where the Great River Tay rises. Tyndrum Lower, an unmanned station now, 
The West Highland Line goes north for Rannoch Moor, leaving from the upper station. But the lower station was the terminus of the Oban Railway for four years. Then it started moving west, round Ben Louis for Glen Lochy, to reach Dalmally in 12 really exciting miles. There are grand panoramas galore, all new country that's opening ahead, you're descending towards Loch Awe. Zigs, zags, burns, mountains, everything new. You feel the west is getting closer. Strathorchy over there, Ben Cruachan ahead, behind is Ben Louis. The Oban line reached Dalmally in 1877, but it took another three years to cover the 45 miles to Oban. But Dalmally opened up new scope for tours because it was only a short distance by horse drawn coach over the hills to the Clyde steamers, to Inverera, the Kyles of Butte. Passengers could go cruising on Loch Awe. From Glasgow or Edinburgh, you could get a cheap day excursion, only seven and six from Glasgow, another six minutes more from Edinburgh, which included a sail right down to the foot of the longest loch in Scotland, 25 miles, and back for the train just after 5.15. Then only a four hour trip back home. Kilhurn Castle is the ruined stronghold of the Campbells of Glenorchy, who in time became the most powerful family in Scotland. No wonder it figures on so many chocolate boxes. The hulk of the castle dominates two rivers, the Stray and the Orkey, and the train loops round them to run along the broad top of Loch Awe. Loch Awe means the River Loch because it's so narrow. This bit with its wooded islands is its only broad stretch. The baronial style house, Loch Awe House, was built as a hotel in 1881 by the Caledonian Railway. And this platform, the station was called Loch Awe. So the people got off the train, crossed the bridge, and they were up into the hotel. But in the morning, if they wanted to go for a sail, all they had to do was to descend, cross the bridge again, and walk down here over the pier. And they would find a boat tied up to take them for a sail. Loch Hall is not only beautiful, it's got a very unusual advantage over most lochs. The salmon fishing is free and it's good for all of its 25 miles. Loch Hall is longer than Loch Lomond. Geologists tell us the Pass of Brandon is fairly recent, perhaps only 10,500 years old. 
gouged out by glaciers of the most recent ice age. Its ancient outlet was at the other end of the loch. Nature exploited a fault, a real headache to this day for builders of roads or railways. <laughs>